Well, good morning, everyone. It is a little after sunrise, and I'm watching as the golden light is descending the canyon walls back behind the camera there. There's blue sky overhead, and I was just thinking that the entire time I've been here in Zion, I haven't seen a single cloud, which is pretty nice. Uh, the wind is calm right now, though there's been little bits of wind uh, closer to sunrise. But I've come here to the main canyon. I uh, hopped on my bike this morning, uh, threw my pack on my bike trailer, and I uh, wanted to see what the status of the fall color is here. And you can see things are still quite green, which I was expecting, but I thought there'd be a little more of a hint of color. Uh, some of the smaller maples have turned, uh, but the big ones are definitely holding out. I mean, these ones back behind me here, they really, uh, maybe at the very top I'll see a occasional yellow leaf, but not too much. But even so, this is one of my absolute favorite places in Zion. I photographed this particular scene back in 2017. It's just so calm and so peaceful here, so I always love visiting it any time that I'm here. But I'm going to spend a little time wandering around a little bit, just to see what there is to to scout and um, I, I'm not really seeing anything right now that really jumps out to me as something I really would like to photograph. It really does need some more time just to build that color contrast. Uh, but we'll see as I uh, head further up the canyon to you know check those areas out as well. But I suspect I am going to end up uh, cycling back to camp and uh, hopping in my truck and revisiting the areas where I've been for the past few days, but just knowing that it's going to be pretty warm up there and how nice and cool and lush it is here in the main canyon uh, probably makes me uh, want to linger here a little while longer, even though I don't really see any subjects to photograph at this point in time. But always fantastic to revisit past subjects, check up on them, and lots of green grass, lots of green leaves, and Absolutely beautiful morning here in Zion. I was wandering after writing my journal entry and just uh, enjoying the scenery a bit. I found an area with some maples that have some pretty good fall color. Uh, so I just took a photo of the tree you see back behind me there. And it is uh, backlit by some soft reflected light because the sunlight is hitting the very top of the uh, canyon wall, which is sending this nice warm light down. And exposure is very tricky on the scene. Um, it is backlit, but also the leaves are quite dark. And I'm judging the exposure based on the darkness of the trunks. I'm putting them at the lower limit of what the film can do, um, which is about two stops uh, below. And uh, I don't know, we'll see. I did use a warming filter because Ultimately, most of the light that's hitting the scene from the front is coming from the blue sky above. Um, and then you have the warm light coming from the back. 
and I suspect that if I don't use the warm filter, it's gonna go a little bit blue on the front with a little bit of warm in the back, but I think this is gonna really pull out those warm tones. But the breeze continues to be quite calm. And uh, actually I exposed two sheets of film on this scene. And uh, we'll see. As the light continues to develop, I might expose one more sheet, but I'm probably good with what I have. I think at a certain point, the sun might start hitting in the background of the composition. But uh, we'll see. I'll wait around a little bit longer, and then I'll get things packed up. i continue scouting, and then probably at some point hop on my bike and uh, continue to ride through the canyon. But I was not expecting to find a subject with good color, but it feels pretty good. It's going to be 2.5 seconds F45. Let's wait for a breeze to settle. It's a very awkward shooting angle. I'm between two Utah service berries to get the camera in just the right position. The breeze is kicking up now. That's better. There we go. So this tree is one that I scouted, I think it was 2020 maybe 2019 and I've always loved the shape of it and it's very difficult to get a clean background on it because I'm having to shoot upward and you get to the very uh, edge of the canyon wall behind it then there's a little bit of open sky so I had to position my camera between these two bushes here and uh, the breeze is calm right now the light is very very nice no clouds in the sky and the light is going to shift and or the sun is going to shift and then the reflected light should get a little stronger so i think i'm going to sit on this scene and then uh perhaps expose another sheet but it feels great to photograph another subject
So I metered this at a two second exposure. I averaged the lightest and the darkest areas in the scene. And uh, I pay a little more attention to the dark areas in the background on the slope. Because I know those should hold detail. So I try to make sure it's not any darker than negative two. Now just waiting for a break in the wind. It helps if you talk to the tree. Come on, tree. No wind. I was very, very still. So I put a three stop ND on there and that puts me at 15 seconds and now I want wind. Am I going to get wind? Probably not. Big wind. See, this is what happens. Now it's going to be calm. It was acting really windy earlier. But now it's just going to sit there and stare at me. Yeah. Don't be calm, be windy. Big wind. There we go. Good wind. Good wind. So this is a uh, subject I've walked past many years, and I always struggle to find a composition with it because it's a very tall subject. This ponderosa log goes quite a ways up. And I was always thinking of trying to photograph the whole thing. Uh, but when I was over here yesterday, I realized that a horizontal composition showing just the trunk and these bottom branches really is all I need uh, to sort of tell a story of this. I like how it looks like there's you know, flames coming from this fallen ponderosa. And I should also mention that this is also a subject that has been photographed by Andrew Baruffi. And uh, he did a fabulous job with it. And uh, I can't recall if he has a horizontal or a vertical of it, but just the color is so absolutely gorgeous right now. And the conditions are so nice that I, uh, I can't resist exposing a couple sheets of film on it. And I will be curious to see how it looks for both my two second shutter speed, as well as when I threw on a three stop ND filter at a moment when it was actually quite windy. 
and I'm thinking that might look like flames moving around, but also might just look like a hideous mistake. I, I don't know, but it feels really good to expose many sheets of film on three different subjects today. And I should mention that when I went back to camp earlier today, um, there was a, just, just a little bit of clouds off to the north, and those are the first clouds I've seen in the entire time I've been here. So, at some point, this streak of great weather is going to give out, but it is still absolutely beautiful here in Zion. I was surrounded by a soft symphony of crickets that evening as I packed my bag and made my way back to camp. It was a fitting end to yet another wonderful day in Zion. I can't say I'm satisfied with my first photo that morning, but sometimes the act of taking a photo is more important than the end result. Perhaps I'll find a different way to photograph this subject on a future visit. My second photo was more proof of concept than anything else. I'll keep an eye on this tree on future visits and see if I can photograph it while the fall color is more pronounced. Although I'm satisfied with my photo of the fallen ponderosa surrounded by calm maple leaves, I prefer my second photo with intentional wind movement during the 15 second exposure. The swaths of fluttering leaves help simplify the image, placing more emphasis on the structure of the ponderosa. Much as I had hoped, the windswept leaves give the appearance of flames, making this the first photo I've taken where wind motion is both intentional and also beneficial to the subject. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you around next time. You may have noticed this video has no ads and no sponsors, and I think it's nicer that way. If you enjoy this ad-free and clickbait-free content and want to help me live my dream, a voluntary contribution through PayPal or by joining my Patreon helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. You can find more information by visiting my website at benhorn.com donate. I also have prints, ebooks, and my annual portfolio is available on my website. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you around next time.